So I'm at Didcot Railway Centre's brand new signalling centre and today I'm going to give you a quick lesson on signals. So I'm at Aiton's signal box and I want to speak to Beaton. Now I have a train in my section. And when I change that train in my section on my box, Beaton will also change. It's to tell him that the upline is stuck. So using a form of Morse code, Aiton would contact Beaton to get his attention. Beaton would hear the bell and respond. Once Aiton has uh, received, he'll go and he's asking if the line is clear for an express passenger train. Beaton will acknowledge again and set his section to line clear, which has set Aiton's box to line clear. So he'll uh, send back, which means train entering section. So once that two bells come through, he'll set his section to train on the line. And then acknowledge. Once Aiton has received the acknowledge, he'll set his signal back to normal. And then, once his signal's back to normal and he's accepted the train in section, he'll set the signal. Okay, so he knows that the next section up to Seaton is clear and he'll do the same again. But this one's not working because there's no other box. But he'll do the game. He'll send the acknowledge and send the signals and it will carry on all through the way of the system. Now his signal is currently set to stop. That's the home signal. The red one's the home, yellow a distance. The distance is warning signal. So he'll pull his signal and as he's pulling it, the signal will change, saying that the line is clear to go. Once the train has passed that signal, he'll check for a tail light. Once he's seen the tail light, he'll set his section to line clear. And I'll try and get this one with the lever. He set his signal. So that the train will stop and I'll just set you down for a second so as you can say this is a old lettuce um, lettuce or something um, yes this is an old lettuce signal outside which is actually connected to a point lever uh, um, signal lever in here so I'm now going to set the point outside and that will tell the track the line is clear. I'll reset it now. So that all engines know to stop at that signal. So that was all done by hand originally and then the electric signal came about which led on to the electric control board. Now this shows the red box there is Bristol East signal box and this is all the tracks outside the signal box leading into the station. Using an electrical current in the track and the engine it would show you where it's all coming from. So we have the down main, up main to bath, relief for bath. Uh, the other days I don't know where that is. Gloucester, carriage sidings, down relief, down main, up main, more carriage sidings duck sidings and then into Bristol with all the different platforms so we've got number one number two number three number four this is really confusing actually three five six spurs seven nine and I believe twelve and fourteen so I believe the other numbers would be more that way. Okay. Um, yeah. So, as you can see by the clock at the top, it's six o'clock, and there is a train in the platform down line and the up line, as well as platform nine. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to set the train from Gloucester. So I've cleared the board. Oh, almost. 
Now I'm going to want it coming into platform number one. So, train is coming into Gloucester, it comes across the points, and you can follow it all the way across the points and down into platform number one. And um, this has only been open from June, so there is a few technical glitches. I'll speak to the guy that was programming it earlier. So, they also come with a handy timetable. So, 610, 610, let's have a look. Oh, we have a train leaving. And it's 611. From West Depot through the middle to St. Phillips using the UP LMS. Something's running late. Oh well. So, again, we'll try Cardiff to platform 12. So here comes Cardiff, and it's coming through, and it's coming through. I believe this is the one that really bugs up but later, oh no, yep, here we go, going up, and across, no. and up into platform 12. So I've managed to do with a quick Google to find the bell codes. So call for attention and also acceptance. Well, line acceptance, uh, line occupied acceptance. Sorry. So is the line clear for engine with no more than two brake vans? And you have to leave a definite gap between. So that's one, one, three. And there's a definite gap between. Is the line clear for a branch freight? Okay, I'll try that one again. Is the line clear for a branch freight? Okay. Uh, is the line clear for express freight, livestock, or others? No. Train approaching where authorised, sorry, is the next one. Now we have is the line clear for express freight? So we have got blocking back outside home signal for train already in section. Is the line clear for branch passenger train? Is the line clear for parcels, fish, fruit or other trains? Is the line clear for through freight or ballast train not running under class C, D, E or F head codes? Shunt train, now this is an important one for Quinton's Hill. Shunt train for following trains pass. Now I'll go over Quinton's Hill in another video. Train entering section. Train out of section. Engine assisting at the rear of train. Engine arrived. Is the line clear for empty coaching stock train? So basically all these different codes told the signalman what was coming through his section. Light engine for example would have been working in wrong direction for example. So something coming along the track in the wrong direction, maybe returning after overrunning. Uh, this told the signalman what to expect in his section of the track at any one time and it's amazing, really is amazing that this is how it worked because back in the day they used to have signalmen who would operate signals and or using hand signals and the problem was that um, that was all fine and dandy but when they were running on police time or railway time 
there was no set standard time for the country back then. So the what he would look at his watch and go, it's been five minutes, send the next train. Again, which was brilliant in concept. But when you had a train that could run at 40 mile an hour versus a train that could run at 50 mile an hour, the 50 mile an hour train coming second would catch up to the 40 mile an hour and there would quite often be accidents. So they needed a new system and the absolute block system was introduced. As I said earlier, these boards shows everything that was going on in this section. This is one block. So at the end of each board, roughly in conjunction with what was actually there on the track would be signals and there would be a few others within the um, within the section such as here I believe that's a signal anyway it sort of looks like signals to me so and this was a block now for a branch line block where you've only got or a main line section with only two tracks it was pretty simple you started at one end and if the up line had an engine anywhere between that home signal and that home signal, which was the next one for the, um, for the next signal box, you couldn't let any other trains in. And you had to wait for your signalman further up the line to tell you that the train had come through and into his section. Uh, it didn't always work. Not everything was controlled by signalman who even though signalmen do control the points and everything, sometimes a ground level point is necessary. And these are for, especially within sidings where a signalman can't be controlling everything, the crews of the engines will set the points themselves. So that's basically signals for you um, and the block operating system. It wasn't, it is the best system in the world for operating railways and it is still in use today. It is more advanced now, it's a lot safer. Um, but there are still accidents. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope it shows um, a lot of information for you.